guys and gals, and welcome back to the Ironclad Lion channel. I'm very excited to finally bring you this video because it's not only my first New World video, but it's something that's never been done before. I had a ton of fun doing this, but I don't want to spoil anything, so let's get to briefing. During the open beta, I'd gotten myself to level 15 and had completed most of the intro quests in New World. While it was neat to test out the mechanics, I didn't feel like grinding out levels in the starting areas that were going to be wiped anyways. So that's when I decided I was going to run around the entire New World. I may have been only level 15, but I am a man who lives for danger and adventure. The New World was calling my name and I had to see it all. Like many wash-ups on the New World shore, I'd begin my journey from First Light, at the top of the rock in the southeast corner of the map. From First Light, would travel through Cutlass Keys to Monarch's Bluffs, would trek through Ebonscale Reach, then climb our way up Great Clee. For maximum pucker factor, would be going through the horrors of Shattered Mountain and making our way down to Eden Grove. Just when we think we've gotten through the worst of it, Morningdale and Restless Shore awaited us. Our last big hurdle would be getting through Reekwater. After that, though, we could enjoy a romp through Windsward, finally returning to our wonderful rock in First Light. At least, that was the original plan. Because you see, I had no idea what awaited me on this journey. I wasn't even sure if I could make it all the way around the New World. I was underleveled and quite unequipped for the journey ahead. I also had a strict time limit, as I only had two days left in the open beta to accomplish this daunting goal that I had set for myself. I asked myself if I could run around the entire new world, and there was only one way to find out, so let's go answer that question together. First Light was a pleasant jog, with no enemies to concern myself with, and a beautiful coastline. While broken and torn asunder, there was a certain beauty to the shipwrecks that had been washed ashore. Their timber astray and crew unaccounted for, it filled me with feelings of wonder and excitement. The rocks that emerged from the sand added depth and fun obstacles for climbing, reminding me of my childhood years of climbing beach rocks. A brilliant coast, clear waters, and a bright sky. Truly, I thought, there wasn't anything better than this. I encountered my first fishing spot and caught my first fish of the journey, a 30-inch halibut, almost as long and as hefty as my green pants. I couldn't stay in one spot for too long, however. I had to keep going. Running under the Great Stone Arch, I ran into my first mean-looking animal, an alligator. I had never seen one of these beautiful creatures before. How fast are you, Mr. or Mrs. Alligator, I thought to myself. It turns out, however, that an alligator is significantly faster than a handsome adventurer. It gave me a little bite, it must have hurt, I thought to myself, and with a second snap of its jaw, I was dead. This was surprising, as I had already entered an area where I could survive merely two hits before death, and I had felt like I had hardly left First Light. Upon looking at the map, however, it was very clear that I had indeed left First Light, and had taken my first step into Cutlass Keys. As for respawning, I would soon learn a valuable lesson to build periodic camps along my journey, as I now would have to travel back to the nearest settlement lengthening my journey significantly. This alligator, however, would be the first of many, many deaths in my great run. To make my life slightly less painful, I'd need wood and flint. These two beautiful things would come to be my most valuable supplies. Now with brain power, I set up my first camp in Eyed Ol' Alley the Alligator. Soon, our paths would cross again. Farewell, Ali.
With each new region I entered, I'd have to learn the enemy types and categorize their threat levels. Fast animals, for example, would fall into my medium risk category, as they are difficult to outrun, but could still be avoided with clever movement. Other enemies like the Drowned may hit hard, but they were slow enough to easily be avoided and would fall into my low threat category. Anything with a ranged weapon, however, would be put into the high threat level. Any enemy with a gun, as I'd find out quickly, would be extreme threat, avoid at all costs. Something that became the bane of my existence would be the 500 meter range of the camp respawn. If I died even a few meters outside of the 500 meter range, I'd be sent back to the last settlement. There was no user interface pop-up that would alert me of leaving my camp's range, so I'd have to check my map constantly and set up camps often. These heavy corruption areas were spooky, visibility was low, and I had no idea what might surprise me around the corner, but at least I was able to rest easy from normal enemy types. Oh, and you can't swim in New World because reasons. So walking along the bottom and trying not to drown is the next best thing. You also can't place camps near landmarks, which means I'd have to run through this entire area at risk of no camp respawn. So here we come upon the Unbound Island. Now normally I'd be able to avoid any one of these enemies, even the spectral enemies who are quite fast, but this island for whatever reason has an absurd amount of enemies on it, which is probably intended for a group to clear. Trust me, I tried many, many times to make it all the way around the edge of this island. It was an absolute nightmare. Apparently if you die too many times, it'll default you to spawn back at town. And since I was hitting the respawn button a lot, it sent me all the way back to first light. You can imagine my frustration. God dang it, that's like 20 minutes. However, God. since I had more of the new world to see and a strict time limit, I'd settle on discovering this landmark island. I had originally planned on sticking to the edge of the map, but now I realize that was not possible and probably not the the most exciting thing as I'd be missing much of what was on land. So instead, I decided that I'd circle the map as best I could, but that I'd additionally have to discover every region. 
I had to at the very minimum discover landmarks to prove that I visited every region and ran around the entire new world. Some areas may prove impassable, but I wasn't giving up on my goal to see the entire new world, so I'd find a way through no matter what challenge I faced. As I traveled deeper into the wilderness, other players would become very scarce. It may have been lonely at times, but the beauty of the landscape captivated me. I was getting to see more of the new world, and forgotten at times that I was even playing an MMO. Beauty, danger, and adventure. That's what I wanted from New World, and I wasn't going to play the game like other people. Because I'm not like other people. The struggles I would face would be unknown to everyone else on the server, and even in that, I found beauty. Charting the uncharted, discovering the undiscovered, and traversing this harsh land brought me great joy. I had made it through the swamps of Cutlass Keys and arrived in Monarch Bluffs. With my 15th camp being pitched, I was an official nature lover. Nature is awesome. You know what isn't awesome? Being sent all the way back to a settlement. So I'd be taking a quick detour to the Cutlass Keys settlement to make sure I had a checkpoint. The detour added time to my journey, but if I didn't discover the hamlet, I could risk being sent all the way back to First Light. After setting out from the hamlet, I made some adventuring adjustments to my character. I wasn't going to be killing anything, so I took all of my points out of intelligence and put them into constitution, to give me a slightly better chance of survival.
taking my way north, I'd make another detour and stop by the Monarch Bluffs Hamlet and hit up my boy Giles. He'd hook me up with a nice jacket to keep me warm for the trip ahead. It was finally time to leave Monarch Bluffs and take our first steps into Ebon Scale Reach. I was finally getting into high level zones and had no idea what awaited me. I assumed I wouldn't be able to reach the islands that were way off the coast, but I'd still try my best to make my way through the region. Ebon Scale Reach seemed very peaceful upon my initial excursion into the territory. I got to experience a zen-like walk on a nice mountain path. It was all very peaceful, until the Fire Nation attacked. I set my camp up outside a very Dynasty-era looking castle. While the swordsman guarding the front steps seemed like a nice fellow, the guy guarding the courtyard was something else entirely. I didn't even get a chance to see what weapon he was holding because... What? Dynasty Musketeer jumps into the air then fires his gun to do a backflip. I was not prepared to get styled on this hard. I'm not even sure I want to finish this video at this point. I have so much footage of me getting killed by this guy. I'm going for a walk. Up the mountain. There might be a way to get through that castle, but I unfortunately did not have the time to throw myself at any one location. I had to keep moving, and so I did. Oh, but Ironclad, the Musketeers aren't so bad. You can just sneak past them. I wish that were true, my friend. I really do. Fact is, I tried every path I could find. These Musketeers had huge aggro range, and they never, ever missed their shots. I got so tired of getting killed by muskets who didn't miss a single shot, I eventually went to the coast to try my luck there. That'll do, pig. That'll do. This was a perfectly timed dodge roll, by the way. Needless to say that Ebon Scale Reach was turning out to be my least favorite region. So what do you do if you are angry and stressed? You buy shirts and dresses. I learned that from my wife. Why? To tear them apart, of course. Every time you die, your equipment takes damage. This can be repaired with repair parts from salvaging your other equipment. Shirts and dresses will give you just as many parts as a full set of armor. So naturally, I bought every sweaty and used shirt off the market to sustain myself. Since I got sent back to Monarch Bluffs, I decided a change of route was in order. I'd head through Everfall and even get to see a bit of Brightwood before returning to Ebonscale Reach. This way I'd visit two more inner regions and could still get back on track around the new world. Getting sent all the way back to a settlement was frustrating for sure, but I always tried to make the most of it and figure out the new best path to take. With every death came frustration, with frustration came analysis, with analysis came knowledge, with knowledge came a bigger brain, with a bigger brain I didn't die quite as often. I also changed my code in town. The stats were lower, but I didn't need those where I was going. Need to look good when exploring the new world, you know. Brightwood was cool, I guess, but if I wanted to live, I knew I didn't want to be chased by ghosts for too long, so I quickly made my way back into Ebon Scale Reach.
511 meters. That's just my lucky number, isn't it? So after running from Everfall again, I made sure to set up camp even more often. The brain was growing, and we made our way into the Stony Mountains. I was looking forward to leaving Ebenscale behind for good. Great Cleave. I was so happy to finally see those words. I was ready for a change of scenery, and anything not Ebenscale related. Once into Great Cleave, I plotted my route through the outpost to make sure I had checkpoints. Good old Cleves Point. What a nice little outpost. It was a huge weight off my shoulders to know I had a really solid checkpoint. But now I needed a plan. I knew I'd be heading into Shattered Mountain soon, and it looked like I had a whopping two options for paths to take. It was going to be rough, but somehow we needed to make it through. In my initial route, I ran into Zvikin's Stand. This place looked like a concentration camp, and was meant for a level 50 group of 5. Looking at the map again, I realized it might be easier to take the western path and head for the next outpost. But hey, we were already at the gate, might as well try. didn't work so well, so the other path it is, although I ran into problems with the corruption. There was only one thing I knew that was immune to corruption, my stunningly chiseled body. Oh yeah, that corruption doesn't stand a chance. I don't even need my HUD for this one. Let's go. Having dazzled my way through the corruption, I could now rest easy and set up my first camp inside Shattered Mountain. Taking a look at the path ahead of me, it looked like I could actually make it through as long as I kept to the rocks as much as possible. There were a lot of enemies, but it still seemed to be my best option. Mountain Rise Outpost. My god, I could hardly believe it. 
Level 17 and my equipment shattered like the mountain. But there I was, dancing like a mad lad. The journey was far from over, however. We were merely at the halfway point. I realized I had gone through nearly all my wood, as there weren't many trees in Shattered Mountain. I gathered what I could by the outpost and continued forward. My first encounter with the angry earth. I wasn't sure what to expect. I tried sneaking down the road multiple times, but it became clear that the angry archers were not going to let me pass that easily. My big brain came to the conclusion that running for the river to the north would be the best path. It was the right call, but that didn't mean it was going to be easy. While Shattered Mountain was certainly difficult as expected, I'd still say Ebon Scale was far more painful of a region to get through. I wasn't expecting to see the angry earth in Shattered Mountain, but I suppose they would be angry if their mountain got broken. Eden Grove, baby! Yabba dabba doo! Ah, Eden Grove. What a breath of fresh air it is from Shattered Mountain. Lush trees, vibrant colors, and impressive ruins. It was all so pleasant. At least, until I ran into the angry earth again. I jumped for the rainbow, but it was always just out of reach. I just want to taste it! Rocks. Rocks were my friends. Rocks are friendly, reliable, and keep the wolves away. They make pretty good conversation, too. So I'd stay with my trustworthy rocks, for they were lifelong partners, soulmates. They showed me beauty that I'd never seen before, and for that, I'm thankful. Last stand outpost. I would have loved to stay longer, but I could feel the air changing. I gathered what wood and flint I could, for the storm was coming. Morningdale. It may not have been sunny, but there was a certain comfort to the rain. The soft heat of the torches upon my skin, to the glow of the moon overhead. I quite enjoyed my time in Morningdale, and look forward to the day I can visit it again.
The Morningdale hamlet was quiet, as was the rest of the region. I didn't mind being alone, but at least there was one other to keep me company. Ah uh, yes, Miss Nach Bishlam. Bishlam was a fine lady, but I simply had to be off. There were more inns to check into. Back to the coasts of Restless Shore. Having a more tropical feel to it, Restless Shore was a tricky area to navigate. While the vast beaches provided areas to move around on, the enemies were pretty dense in some areas. Once again though, rocks were my best friend and gave me an option. And here I am. The Restless Shore Hamlet is one of the coziest I've been in. I love that the buildings and docks are all built around this cove, and the sailing ship completes the whole thing. I wouldn't mind calling this place home. It's comfy. But alas, I have more amazing places to see. Until next time, my cozy Hamlet.
18, baby, 18! I do find it pretty neat that you can gain a significant amount of experience just from exploring. Now, most people probably aren't crazy and would explore safer areas, but for the daring few, it can be very rewarding, both physically and mentally. Weaver's Fen, a rather odd name for a rather odd location. This region would unfortunately be my least traveled in, as I'd just be popping in to discover a landmark, then continuing on my way. I could have traveled to the local hamlet, but that'd be a rather long detour, and wouldn't really be contributing to running around the new world. I'll have to return to it at some point to explore further. Ah, Reekwater. Despite a rather off-putting name, Reekwater is home to many cool areas and is a fun region to explore. I found the local lighting to be soothing, and the locals themselves, not so much. N nani Marshscape Paradise. The Reekwater Hamlet was one of the biggest surprises in my whole journey. While I was expecting a boggy town, the hamlet was a thing of beauty. The cozy lair of fog, with impeccable tree houses connected with bridges, this place is awesome. While originally seeing if I could find a way across the water, I stumbled upon this massive structure. I was very surprised this didn't count as a landmark, because this thing is the definition of a landmark. Since I was here though, and I'm a free man, naturally, I had to climb it. Oh yeah, it's all coming together.
so back to business. We just need to get across this water. And I missed the jump. Well, we're not making it out of this one. I actually tried this a few times, but let's just say it didn't pan out. So we gotta go a little north. Now usually rocks are my friends, but since I'd been hanging out with some stones, they got a little jealous and didn't want to let go, just like my wife. Now, I was a bit confused on what had happened, but it soon became very apparent that I was now stuck in the rock. Try as I may, the rock would not let me go, but it's a beta, so it's to be expected. Now let's just hit this handy unstuck button. Ah, clever girl Rakita, well played. I'd have to do the unthinkable and actually recall to the last inn I visited in Reekwater. But looking back on it, it could have been much worse. I could have forgotten to check in and sent me back who knows how far. Or I could have had to wait for the recall cooldown. Terrifying to think about. This event at least would let me see a new part of Reekwater and cut straight toward Windsward. God, that took me a few takes, actually. Straight toward Windsward. Straight toward Windsward. Blech. Windsward, my region. How are you holding up? Because I'm barely holding up myself. I'm reasonably familiar with Windsward as it was my starting region for this character, but it was pretty cool to see it again from a different perspective, since I was returning from Reekwater. Looking down from my rock, I found it so funny to see players again, fighting random monsters on the beach. How small they looked down there. I'd spent so much time in my travels, I felt more connected to the rocks I climbed on than other players. I wondered if any of them might look up and see the glorious man standing above them. Radiant, the epitome of freedom. Ah, Windsward Hamlet. So cozy, bright, and packed with way too many people. I'll stick to my rocks, thank you. Off I go. I really should be finishing this up. Use the boost!
So, we come full circle. While you think I'd be relieved to see I was back in first light, I was hungry. Hungry for that meaty first light rock. It was nice to be back in such a well-lit and happy-looking environment, but no matter how cheerful, I was on a mission and couldn't get distracted. Such an intense feeling of nostalgia, seeing all those shipwrecks on the beach. So close, I could taste it. Looking back on my travels, I'm sure there are plenty of things I could have done differently, things I didn't see, routes I could have taken, but I'm so happy with the trails I did walk, the rocks I climbed, and all the intense life and death moments. My darling, there she was, waiting for me this whole time. So sweet, so chunky, so luscious. My sweet mineral, my big pebble, my little boulder, my rock candy. It's time. Where were we? Where did we go? List them! First Light, Cutlass Keys, Monarch Bluffs, Evanscale Reach, Everfall, Brightwood, Great Cleave, Shattered Mountain, Eden Grove, Morningdale, Restless Shore, Weaver's Fen, Reek Water, Windsward, and back to the rock, baby! We did it all! We ran through every region and around the new world. We started at level 15 and ended at level 18. I was a man on a mission, and what a journey it was. I got to see some really beautiful areas and thoroughly enjoyed my adventure. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. Are you going to be playing New World? What weapons will you be playing? What's your favorite region? 
If you want to see me in New World, I'll be playing on Yggdrasil NA West, and maybe a little on East as well. Currently the only friends I have in New World are rocks, so I'd love to see you all on release. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Ironclad Lion, and I'll see you in the next video. I need some sleep. I'm never making a 50 minute video in three days ever again.